In this tutorial, I'm going to go over information on the Pilot's Operating Handbook. Here you can see two versions of it. On the left, we have the actual Pilot's Operating Handbook, which is provided by the manufacturer and must be kept in the airplane. And on the right, we have another version of the Pilot's Operating Handbook, which is more for you to have as a reference. This is still from the company, but it's not exactly specific to the airplane that you will be flying. So it's very important that you use the performance data from the book on the left. You can expect to find the POH in the back pocket of the pilot or co-pilot seat as shown here. Let's take a look at what's inside the actual pilot's operating handbook. If we open it up, we can see here we've got introductory material, and then there's nine tabs for the nine sections. We've got the general information. Here we have limitations. Next we have in red, section three for emergency procedures. Next we have normal procedures for section four. After that, we've got Section 5, which is on performance. Section 6, which is on the weight and balance and the equipment list. We have Chapter 7, which is on airplane systems and description. And then we have Section 8, which is on airplane handling, servicing, and maintenance. And then finally, we end with section 9, which is on supplemental information. And if we continue, there's another booklet here, which has uh, pilot safety and warning supplements. And there's a booklet here. Here we have the actual aircraft papers. This is all the weight and balance for this airplane. We have a passenger briefing card here and that tells you how to open the doors, operate the seatbelts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then here we have uh, information cards for the aircraft software, and these are for things like the databases on the Garmin G1000. And then we have another uh, Garmin installation uh, CD here on the back. And so that's what you'll find in the actual POH for the aircraft and it's really that simple. Now I'm going to show you another available alternative that's great for studying. It's completely free and you can get it from the Cessna website. If we go to single engine airplane and then we go to the Skyhawk, what we'll see here is that there's a link for brochures and documents. So let's click on that. Here we can see that Cessna was kind enough to provide uh, a ton of information on the airplane for free. Here we can see that there's a Skyhawk Pilot's Information Manual, and that's for both the Skyhawk and Skyhawk SP. So let's click on this PDF document for the Skyhawk SP. Here we can see that we get a PDF of the entire Pilot's Operating Handbook, and it says, at the time of issuance, this information manual was an exact duplicate of the official Pilot's Operating Handbook and FAA-approved airplane flight manual and is to be used for general purposes only. It's not going to be kept current and therefore cannot be used as a substitute for the official pilot's operating handbook and FAA approved airplane flight manual intended for operation of the airplane. The, airplane, the pilot's operating handbook must be carried in the airplane and available to the pilot at all times. Here we can see we've got some performance specifications in the introduction such as speeds, cruise power, climb rates, service ceiling, takeoff and landing performance, stall speeds, and maximum weight. Here we have a continuation of the performance specifications. Here we've got the cover page which shows us a photograph of the aircraft. And then we've got the table of contents. Now note that there's nine sections and these are standard sections as required by the FAA. In other words, for any airplane, Section 1 will always be general. Section 2 will always be limitations. Section 3 will always be emergency procedures. Section 4 will always be normal procedures. Section 5 will always be the performance. 
Section 6 will always contain weight and balance and equipment list. Section 7 will always contain information on the airplane and system description. Section 8 will always contain handling, service, and maintenance. And finally, Section 9 will always contain supplements. And this is so that if you switch across different airplanes or different manufacturers, you can uh, safely rely on always going to Section 3 and finding the emergency procedures. And this basically makes everything very quick and easy to use. And after that, we go to Section 1, which is on general information. So that's all there is to it, and it's really that simple.